Hello and welcome, I am Designer Dave, and today we will be doing a game design analysis for Stray. So if you've played Stray or you haven't played Stray, regardless, I'm just going to break down all the systems in the game. It's a very cool game about a cat. And the first thing you do in any sort of game design analysis is you have to know what you're analyzing. So, what genre is this game? Now, it's very obviously an adventure game to me. Um, but it has action elements, which can confuse a lot of people. And there are some who might think it's a platformer, but it's definitely not a platformer. So what I've decided to call it is a boutique adventure rather than a adventure game with action elements. And I'll get into why. <laughs> it's a really interesting game. And if you haven't played it, I, I do actually recommend it. So the first thing you start with in a game design analysis is a breakdown of all the systems. What are the core systems of this game? If you remember from the game design lesson I gave about game systems design, you might be familiar with this topic. Now on the topic of adventure games, these are what I listed as the common systems. Navigation, points and scoring, and conversation. Now points and scoring is an outdated thing from old adventure games where at the end of the adventure you would get point evaluation of how you did based on how many things you found and secrets and stuff. Most games, especially adventure games, don't do that anymore. I miss it a little bit, but it's not core to adventure, so it's no surprise that it's not here. But what is, is navigation. The game has uh, a lot of navigation. It's all about finding things and getting around from place to place. Um, there's a lot of exploration in this game, finding things, uh, dealing with puzzles, it typically involves navigation uh, and finding things behind other things. And then there's minor combat. Uh, it's tempting to say that there's a lot, but there's really not. And the conversation system, which is unique to this game because you're a cat and all you can do is meow. But because there's a robot involved, you can talk to certain robots. <laughs> and then finally, there are some puzzles, though it's very light on the puzzles. I would say puzzles are the least uh, <laughs> amount in this game than any adventure game I've played. Once you've determined what the core systems are, now we're going to break down each one into their subsystems. So with navigation, uh, you have a... Well, these would be called verbs in an adventure game. So in this game, you can walk, which is your normal pace as a cat. <laughs> you can run, which is the sprinting mode. And you can jump, but it's on rails. So you can only jump to locations that they allow you to. So it's all designed by the level designer where you can and cannot jump and you can fall down which uh is sort of a mechanic but well we'll get to it um what's the purpose of walking it's observation you're walking around you want to move slowly so you can see what's going on going from place to place you're trying to figure out what's going on this mechanic of navigation has a, a purpose when you're running you're evading enemies or you are traveling long distances it too has a, a very strong and and throughout the game purpose uh, most of the boss fights are about running and where you run to uh, jumping it gives you some amount of evasion it allows you to escape uh, most enemies and it gives you a sense of verticality it lets you go up onto the highest buildings and it definitely super critical for a cat game. Falling also is about evasion and verticality. You might not be familiar with when you can fall, but you can sort of force yourself to fall off a ledge. And you can also fall if you delay too long on certain platforms or if you jump onto the wrong platform. Sometimes it's used as a way to force your character into certain situations, but it's um, a very minor part of the navigation. In fact, I can only think of maybe five times in my entire run through where I fell down. The walking, the running, and the jumping are very consistently used throughout the game and are probably the most critical elements of the game. Exploration. <clears throat> this is where you go out and you try to find things uh, and new places to go. So early on there's collectibles um, and throughout the game there are a few collectibles that you get in your inventory that you can use for stuff. There are memories that you can find throughout the game. That's the posters and things and the robot remembers who he really was. I won't do any spoilers here. Interactions. These are the things you can do with uh, batting stuff around and just talking to the robots and playing with the other stuff. <clears throat> Secret areas. These are locations that are not part of the main path, but you can find. And that's about it. The collectibles serve the purpose early on as a speed boost. You can get these drinks that are a speed boost. However, um, 
it's quickly abandoned. <laughs> like about after you get out of the main uh, town, you never see or collect them again. You never, and I never use them. And um, I feel like they disappeared from my inventory as well at one point because I never drank them and I don't remember seeing them in there anymore. The memories are serve the world and storytelling and build up to the main uh, climax of the story uh, involving the the robot character. The <laughs> main interaction is is meowing and and scratching things. Um, it's the cat stuff. Uh, and early on, it's used as a way to guide the player. When you meow, certain objects light up, and it gives you an indication of which direction to go, but that's also abandoned later on. And then the secret area is primarily for memories, so there's always a reason to explore and get more of the world lore. Um, it's well done. I liked I liked a lot of the little secret areas, and they give you a, a little, bit of, little bit of visual storytelling when you get into certain locations. Combat. It does have combat. <laughs> there are pits things you can fall into, uh, but also that enemies can fall into, which is a very important part of the early combat. Uh, eventually you get a gun that is a UV ray gun, which is uh, critical for a while and then disappears. And then shaking and evasion, where you can knock enemies that have grabbed onto you off. Um, they slow your speed down, so you need to get them off by tapping the left alt button and then you can move at full speed again. The pits are primarily to get enemies to run into. Uh, you really can't fall into a pit unless you're trying to do it on purpose. Um, and there are a couple of boss fights involving the little grub grub things that chase after you uh, that involve pits and jumping at the correct time and at the correct angle to get them to fall in and you, you to escape. The UV ray is really cool. Uh, when you get it, you can roast the enemies over time. So you hold it down, the UV ray sprays out and they grow, 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 and then they pop. However, if you hold it down too long, the weapon will overheat and then there's a long timer before it comes back online. However, the gun is used, I think, somewhere towards the middle third of the game pretty much disappears before the fourth act. The shake and evasion is about timing. It slows you down. If they grab onto you, you shake them off and you move on. And really it's about avoiding getting hit so that you can move at full speed and escape uh, to the next area. There is a conversation system in this game. Uh, it's the meet system, which is the first thing you do when you meet a new character. There's show item, which allows you to show something in your inventory to one of the robot characters. There's environmental prompts, which are little signs and things that you can find, and your robot companion will explain it. Uh, meeting is for the exposition, the main story. Everyone you meet will sort of push the story along in some fashion or give you some clues as to what's uh, been going on in the background or what happened in the historical past. When you show them item, it's typically a progression method. Uh, they explain something or they give you clues that allows you to progress. And the environmental prompt is Primarily for story, there are, I, th I think there are a few that are clues, but uh, I don't exactly remember. Uh, actually, like the safe and stuff will warn you that it's it needs a code. Puzzles, very light element of the game. Uh, you can probably count the number of puzzles in this game on one hand, uh, which they primarily consist of codes, environmental puzzles, and item analysis. For codes, you mainly have to observe the world, find certain things in the world, Literally, they can be codes written on walls and things that you have to use. There's very, very few of them. So when there is something that looks like a code on a wall, it's it's pretty obvious. The environmental puzzles involves moving objects around. There's one point where you have to plug power sources into the wall in order to get something to activate, but it's very, very rarely used. Predominantly, it's uh, a puzzle in key format, which I didn't include on here, but uh, I guess that could be part of item analysis uh, when you you can rotate stuff and observe it. But I think there's only one thing in the whole game <laughs> that you do it to, and it, it, it almost is irrelevant because the actual solution is somewhere else. In the item analysis, I would also include things like finding a key to use on a door, which I think happens a, a couple times. The last category, I, I made cat stuff, which is basically knocking stuff off shelves, scratching the floor or the walls, um, and, and sleeping. Which initially I thought the sleeping system was um, how you saved your progress. I thought it was the, a checkpoint system. It turns out sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. <laughs> it's part of the boutique nature of the game, I suppose. But actually these little elements add a lot to the game and it wouldn't have felt quite like a cat game without these. Even though there is only, I think, one or two 
maybe four instances throughout the game where they're super useful and actually do something meaningful like knocking stuff off a shelf to find a, a puzzle piece or an inventory item that you need and scratching a wall to get someone's attention so that they come and open the door for you. That's, that's about it. But it is actually maybe the best part of the game. And that's it. That's literally all of the systems in Stray. <laughs> so it's actually not, not a huge game. But oh, I wanted to point out why I call it a, a boutique game. So in our systems breakdown, navigation is consistent throughout. Exploration is something that's primarily done in one or two areas. It is done throughout the game. You have to find certain things, but there's one main city in the midpoint that is where most of the exploration is done. The rest of it is very linear, straightforward. Uh, combat is minor. It's done in one or two sections. The rest of it is completely evasion, which is part of, I would say, navigation, but could be considered combat as well. And that evasion is used consistently throughout, and there are some minor puzzle elements involved with that towards the end of the game where you're just avoiding uh, enemy patrols and things like that. And then the conversation system is very simple and straightforward. You meet them, they give you a little bit of uh, exp exposition or explanation. Sometimes they give you some clues and story stuff, but what's great about this game is that all of these things are very much customized to whatever the designer wanted to do so he wanted to do exploration in this one city did a bunch of exploration there prior to that there you don't even have a way to converse with anyone so you're just running around as a cat meowing um it's beautifully done the systems are very simple but it shows how you can take these simple things and then create this amazing game the only thing I would say is that I imagine they spent about <laughs> forever and a day on just uh, this element right here, jumping on rails. So they did a very good job of making sure that 90% of the time, anything that looks like you could jump up on it, you're gonna be able to jump up on, but it's not uh, physics-based or anything like that. So it's, it's very much that someone had to sit there and go, here's where you can jump, here's where you can jump, here's where you can jump throughout every level, which I can only imagine was the most time consuming thing of, on, in the entire project. It had to be, but it's, it's very well done. I highly recommend playing Stray. And uh, now you understand all of the systems that are in it. We've broken them down into their component parts. If you think I've missed anything, please comment down below. Otherwise, have a good morning, and if I don't see you later, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Oh, hey there, almost forgot. Uh, I have merch now. If you'd like to go to the merch store and support the channel, you can. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, breakdown of Stray, and uh, I look forward to doing another game real soon.